thanking everybody who came out for Jericho and Thomas Allen and Main Base. Uh, means a lot you know, when you think about you know, guys who have been in the program. And Jericho is a unicorn. And what I mean by that is very rarely will you see from there one of the guys who started as a freshman and then finished as a senior. And you know, with the transfer portal or at this level, guys who can go professional right away or try to go a little bit early. So I want to thank those. I want to thank everybody that came out for those guys. It means a lot to them. Um, it means a lot to me. The other thing is, you know, putting on games during a pandemic is one of the hardest things that you can do. And so I agree, I'm greeted by a lot of people when I walk into this building, uh, police officers, uh, folks who've been here for a long time, and they all have put a smile on their face no matter what is going on in their life. And uh, I'm very appreciative of those folks uh, because you know, we don't know, uh, you don't know how you could you got until you hear somebody else's story. So I want to thank those folks um, for allowing us. Um, we're fortunate we did not miss one game in this building this year during the pandemic, and we're very fortunate to have that. So I want to thank those folks. Uh, the game, thought we got off to another slow start. Um, I thought our guys fought. You know, when you look at the difference in the game, is we had no answer for Armando, Armando Baycott. Um, he was great. You know, when you, and, and that's nothing against Jalen Gibson or either one because I think both of those guys tried extremely hard. Uh, but we had no answer. I thought we did a good job on the other guys. We did what we were supposed to do as far as guarding those guys. Uh, but when he has, I want to say, 28 and 18 and then five blocks, I don't know how we can win a game that way. Uh, we, I thought we, we left a lot of easy baskets on the rim. Uh, we had some shots that early on would have been a different outcome if we made them. We drove them and we didn't finish around the basket and, and certainly, um, but my guys fall. And that's all you can ask for. You know, we talked, I talked about our, to, our, to our young kids about a guy like Baycott who came in the league and has gotten better every year that he's been here. And you know, if you want to be inspired by somebody, be inspired by guys who are still in the league who's working and getting better. So congratulations to him. And, and like I said, we had no answer for him tonight. So, question. You mentioned guys driving early, just letting a lot of shots in the room. Harry was pretty aggressive early, but like I said, left some dead. When that happened, does he kind of fall back into that? Just not as aggressive on the rest of the way? Yeah, I don't know if he, you know, what's weird about him, he's got great numbers and he's had a really, really good year for us, but he really hasn't had two great halves. And, you know, and so that's always been an issue for us because, you know, even I've been on him about a half, and then he played one game I was on. I think he had 17 points in a half. I was like, all right, here we go. He's a guy that's going to go off for 40. And then he had three in the next half. Uh, I don't think he shied away from it. I just think he left a lot of easy ones on the rim. And so that we needed those. You know, when Jericho, Jaquavion, and um, Darion doesn't play well, we don't put ourselves in a position to win. Uh, even when other guys have good nights, like, you know, I was so proud of Briard. It may not show him on the stat sheet, but I thought he played with, with um, great defense and hustle. And then finally, Cam Hayes had a game where he made some shots. So those guys were really good coming off, but those three need to have a good game for us. You just touched on it there a little bit, but Cam finally maybe saw some shots from deep hard. How big was that for him today, you know, heading into this last week of the season? Well, I think it's big. I mean, you know, it's you know he's been missing a lot of shots. You know, Cam played a lot of minutes for him. We still believe in him. Um, but I also believe this. If Manny Bates played this year, I think Cam Hayes is a better player. Uh, reason being is because we can throw the ball into someone and then so many tough shots are not on him. He's not a tough shot maker where you can see a guy like Jaquavion, he makes and takes tough shots. I think one of the guys who has really been hurt by Manny's absence and DJ Funderburg's absence is more Cam Hayes than anyone. But it was good to see the ball go in the hole for him. Karen, everyone gave all kinds of eligibility details. I don't know what to make of Manny participating in the team here today, but what do you make of Manny specifically? Well, it's a good one. We went back and forth. And do we, he's graduating, and he wanted, wanted to go through um, senior day with Jericho. They came in, they didn't disclose. Uh, we didn't give him a framed jersey on purpose. 
because he still got eligibility. So if you look at it, everybody else got a framed jersey because they, you know, even Thomas and Jericho could use if they wanted to a couple years, but they're not um, right now anyway. And so I wouldn't, Joe, read too much into it. I knew the first time I said, all right, we're going to let him go through senior. Everybody just said, oh, man, that's not a good sign. It's really not. It's uh, We had great communication. We talked about it. Um, we I decided that, hey, it's okay and it's good for him to go through it. He wanted to go through with his brother who he's been here from day one. Have you had a conversation with him yet about what his plans are next year? I have not. And I won't go until the end of the season. You know, I, I wanted you know, I wanted him first of all to concentrate on his rehab and get back into a good mindset. And once the season's over, we'll sit down and we'll have a bunch of conversations. And to be honest with you, we'll figure out what is the best situation for him and, and figure it out from there. But I have not had a conversation. Kind of on that note, what makes you optimistic about the direction things are headed in beyond next year? As far as the entire program, yeah. or Manny Bates, what are you asking? Uh, the program in general. I love where the program's at. I mean, our guys are fighting. Um, you know, if you if you follow basketball and you just look around college basketball, you take the best center off of any team, and they're going to struggle. Um, same things happen to Clemson, even though they found a way to win the other day against Wake. Same thing has happened to Florida State. Same thing is going to happen to Syracuse. Uh, we just, I hate injuries. I hate them. But on every team, there's one guy that you can't afford to get hurt. And on our team, with Manny Bates. But if you look at the foundation that we're building and the guys who are playing, um, think about this now. Got Ernest Ross in the top 50 to 75 guy who's going to be really good when we show clips. Um, Greg Gant, who you guys haven't seen, has now lost about 20 pounds and playing great. You had Manny back, which we'll talk about that. And then you got Quavion Smith and Breon and, and then Casey Marcel and Cam Hayes. It's a pretty double on the team. Um, I do feel like that we could have been anywhere from a top 25 to 30, um, top 30 program with Manny Bates, but unfortunately we don't have it. So I'm excited about the, the future of the program. You know, how, how do you build some momentum going into both London and Boston again? Yeah. Um, we talked about, you know, we're, we're probably going to be one of those teams that people, and I, I've ran against this in my career, is teams that you just like, man, I don't want to play against because they got nothing to lose. Uh, we're that team. Uh, when you look at the four wins that we have in the conference, it's weird because they have been by double digits. We have played well. And three of them, it's been on the road. Um, and so, uh, we're focused. Uh, we're going to finish this last week of regular season, and we're going to go into Brooklyn and see what can happen. Why, why do you think it is you guys have played better on the road this year? Jonas, if I knew it, um, but if you look, if you go back to the, the last couple years, man, we probably had more road wins than anybody in the entire conference. Um, you know, we finished last year with five you know, straight road wins. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying. I try to figure out how to assimilate being on the road at home, and that hasn't worked. Do you think you need ice cream at home? Yeah, ice cream at home. <laughs> well, we would get it if we win. You gotta win first to get the ice cream, right? Are you doing the thing where you're positive with us, but you're not positive behind the scenes? Well, because you're saying it's funny. I mean, God help me, we're in a press conference together. I feel alive, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, it was 20 to 3, bud. That's not fighting. You know that. Well, I disagree with you because it is fighting when you don't make, you don't make shots. When you look at the at halftime, we had taken 31 shots. They had taken 25. And it wasn't that they didn't fight. If you go back and watch the tape, man, we missed like four or five layups that would have made a difference. And so, uh, Joe, I think you, I hope you know this from me by now. I'm not fake. So I'm not going to give you one side of me and then give you another side. I just don't roll like that. Very positive with my guys because I, I love them and I love everything that they bring to the table. There's nothing that they can do to make me turn on them because of the way they show up every day in the and every day they practice. So, so you said not to read into things earlier with the main base thing. So you tell me if I'm reading too much into what you're talking about with Helms being a unicorn or Armando being out of development. And it takes continuity. So you don't want to have these conversations until after the season, but it kind of sounds to me like you're selling these guys out. Look, it might not be good now, but you got to keep work on it maybe next year. I mean, how much of that is a conversation for continuity for your sake? Yeah, I'm not selling anybody on anything. I'm selling them with the opportunity to play. Um, like, I don't have to sell. I got eight guys that can play. And then Ernest, 
not playing and Greg's not playing, but they get the opportunity. So playing time sells a lot of that stuff. Uh, at the end of the year, we will have a bunch of conversations as we do every year. And it may be, hey, this may not be the place for you. Uh, you guys know this, the transfer portal in about a week will be booming. Uh, not because of Power Five, because we got, you know, we, we typically got a week to go, but in mid-majors, they're gonna be so many guys in the transfer portal. But I, I would never put pressure on guys right now to figure out what they want to do. I want them to stay locked in and finish our job here, two regular seasons, and, and obviously have a chance to go to Brooklyn. But continuity is big, but you also want to keep the right group of guys. And if you keep the right core of guys, then I think you'll be fine. Do you feel like you have your best part of being able to know and then Johnson hit those back-to-back threes? Did he pull you out of the zone quicker than you want to get out of? Well, we, we couldn't stop Baker. And we had to make a difference. Even if we trapped him, we were laid on traps a lot. And then, you know, he was able, Puff Johnson was able to make some three-pointers, you know, from that wing. And that was happening to be on our five-man side. We tried different stuff. Um, you know, he was good tonight. He was a legitimate, you know, low post score that did everything. And, you know, I look at that. And, and I, I think I told you guys this before, man. That, that's what hurts my feelings, Joe, is when you see guys like Mark Williams and guys like Armando Baycock be so great because that's my guy. That's Manny Bates. He blocks shots. He, he can do that. I don't have him. And so that, you, you want to know where I'm frustrated? That's the part of it. I'm frustrated about that part of it. But I cannot be mad at E.B. DeJuan and Jalen Gibson, man. Those guys are giving me everything they have. Um, they're just not ready to play. Coach, two games left on the season. Hindsight 2020, you can't control injuries. Is there anything or any decision that you should go back on and, and maybe think about a little bit more or change? Yeah, don't practice. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to be funny. Just show up for games because, you know, obviously we have an injury. And, you know, it's – and I know – with the media, everybody said, ah, man, you can't say this. We had an injury. You know, Devin Daniels, we had an injury. Manny Bates, we have an injury. Uh, Ernest Ross, we have an injury. Greg Gant had surgery. I mean, I don't know anybody in the country that could withstand that with the guys that we had, especially in our front court. Um, and I'm joking. I, I know you know I'm joking, but there's nothing I can do. You know, we tried. We had that opportunity. If you go back to the beginning of the year, we played so great against a Purdue team. Maybe confidence becomes better if we win that game. Uh, but as far as how we work, how we compete every day, do we do the right things every day? We're doing every, all the right stuff. Last question: Are you you brought out the red jacket today? Are you more of a suit and tie kind of guy, or do you like the quarter zips that we're seeing? The red, the red jacket was for my players. Um, I wanted those guys to, you know, last year we took the senior pitchers in Reynolds Coliseum and we kind of made a ceremony. That wasn't what it was about. So, you know, on senior night, I had in my mind that I was going to dress up and I was going to do it right for those guys and be able to take back pictures because that'll be memories for the rest of their life. But I don't know, it, it actually, to be honest with you, felt weird <laughs> getting dressed in a sports coat. I mean, it really did. And I don't know which way I'm going to go from now. Wait, no, I'll say this. Had we won the game, I would have been in a sports coat again. When's the last time you did this? been two years, and I haven't put a suit on in a long time because I do go to church, but my church is online, and so I have not. Maybe that's from Yeah, maybe, yeah. Welcome to City. There you go. Everybody, listen, I know um, you have a job to do, and you got to do it well, and it's not usual for a coach to tell you, but man, thanks for covering us. I mean, that's, uh, I appreciate all you guys do, and you know, I wish I was winning, and we were winning a little bit more, and maybe even fighting for you, or maybe not. Maybe it is the way it is. But thanks for covering us, and I appreciate you guys, and um, I'll see everybody in Brooklyn.